Hello and very warm welcome to Dr. Ziyad Ahmed YouTube channel. In this short video today I like to talk about chapter 13 of the novel Heart Divided by Mumtaz Shah Nawaz. The novel is The Heart Divided by Mumtaz Shah Nawaz. Uh, in this chapter we shall be trying to see how the writer has attempted to reflect the indigenousness as well as the influence of uh, the external and the internal forces on the characters. You know very well this novel is uh, the production in the 1940s when Pakistan movement or the freedom movement was going on in that Indo-Pakistan area and the novel reflects the efforts of the women in this movement and how they opted with the political situation of that time. So therefore it throws a lot of light on the indigenous struggle for freedom from the British rule in India. But this chapter is less about the political theme. This chapter is more about the uh, feminist theme as well as that of the internal domestic theme of the Muslim household family. Because the writer was required also to reflect how the Muslim families live as the writer belonged to the Muslim family and the change which the Muslim family was undergoing that also goes to talk about in this chapter because of that I term it as a feministic attitude as well. So in order to see what happens there we need to have a look at the text of the chapter and that is why I am taking you to uh, the, the 13th chapter. For example here is the 13th chapter. And in this chapter, we see that the start is being being made with Nishat Manzil, where we can see that Zohra, her brother Habib, and many other people are living. And in this chapter, we also have to see further that the sister of uh, Zohra, which is Zohra, she is married, of course, to her cousin uh, Mansoor in Multan. The marriage has taken place, but. Uh, she is up to some extent not happy in her marriage, not because her husband is not good, not because uh, the family of the husband is not good, but only because she was designed in a different way. She had the stories in her mind in a different way. Her grandfather used to tell her the stories of gloriousness of the Muslim people as we can find in the previous chapters like 11 and 12. We also find that her mind is really something which is growing up and uh, the death of her grandfather has added something to it and she is feeling too sad on these circumstances. That is why here if you look at this paragraph, it's beginning with she was only and ends that out of the conflict. Uh, here in this paragraph, as the very first line suggests that she was lonely, to have been lonely at Multan had seemed natural enough for Multan was new and strange. So that is something which goes to show up to some extent that uh, Sora was not happy in her marriage, not because of the factors I talked already. She's unhappy, first of all, she feels lonely, and she also, although was born in the same house, did she lived for some time in the same house, but then her father's family migrated to Lahore, but still she is struggling to cope with the idea that she's left alone in this family, in this house. So loneliness is occurring in her mind again and again because she has been thrown out of the mainstream which the novel talks about. The mainstream was definitely gathering of the girls, talking about the politics, taking part in the politics and the kind of freedom struggle which was going on. Even at the background, this type of thing used to be discussed in her uh, father's family house, but this was not happening right now in the house of this girl. That is why she was feeling a lot of loneliness. She tried to come up with the idea that she should not feel lonely, but it was happening again and again and again. Her husband was very good to her and uh, when, when the death of the grandfather had taken place and it was the 40 uh, days ritual grieving was required there, her husband took her to that, that place and he stayed in that, in, that, in that house for a long time in order to very close to her. So in fact the writer wants to give the impression by mentioning this kind of thing here about her husband Mansoor that it was not the case that Mansoor was a, a bad husband or the family was bad. It was actually the nature of Sura which was making her feel lonely, which was making her feel sad although the husband was very good. Uh, but she was feeling the kind of situation in which she wanted a company, in which she wanted the care of her husband instead of the care of the servants or some other people because for a girl of her stature, of her mind, of her training as, as was being shown in case of Zohra and in case of Sura as well, needed and demanded that husband should be alongside her for some time of the day in order to take care of her, in order to be friendly with her, in order to share certain things with her because what she can share with the husband she cannot share with anybody else. So when the husband as this paragraph goes to talk that he most of the time stayed outside of the 
room and stayed mostly in the men part of that and that is why it was something which was teasing towards her and that is why Sura felt a uh, kind of difference from her husband and when when the husband came to her in her you know house at that time in her room at that time also uh, she most of the time remained silent or he remained silent so this was causing a lot of problem for her now from here we we can imagine one thing that the change was coming among the women of 1940s but the change was coming at the level of educated women of the elite class women this type of change was less visible among the common women as we see in Ahmed Ali's novel Twilight in Delhi but whatever the change was coming it was demanding and creating the women of the sort who was not satisfied with the previous traditional kind of setup who needed and demanded that she should be treated differently it means that there was a kind of uh, rising thinking in her mind that she needs the husband not to be a kind of patriarchal person but she would like to see the husband as her brother Habib was there she would like to see her husband also taking care of her talking to her being friendly with her and sharing with her as well now because of this attitude she was feeling and alongside that the death of her grandfather made her even more sadder and because of this sadness some people who saw at looked at her who saw her and compared her pre-marriage situation and the post-marriage situation they started to talk like that let us look at the sentence the last sentence for example if you look at the last sentence of this page it says how pale and ill Sura looks someone of them remarked so that is the kind of change which Sura was betraying her face was betraying she was telling her face was telling that okay she was beautiful she had very good looks in the beginning and now after the marriage she's having this type of looks and somebody says possibly it's the grief which has shaken her but that, that was in something undue still it is to be justified by the different dialogues that perhaps it was the grandfather who loved her so much and because of that she's feeling so grievous so all this has put some negative impact on her and as soon as she listens to this she becomes angry and she decides to change herself so we shall find that uh, she becomes totally uh, changed and uh, uh, this change definitely uh, for the time being is very useful for her after listening to this talk of the woman about her dying beauty she she tried to change her she became very pleasant towards her husband she became very pleasant toward the other people as well and tried to take part into life so uh, so she was then concerned about the opinion of the other people this much thing is traditional in her so we can say that uh, it's not the totally independent woman of 1940s it's the woman which is standing in between the two extremes one is the tradition other is the modern and she's standing in between sometimes she has to take care of the traditional thing and ultimately she has to come back to the modernness as well so that is why Sora has taken it as a challenge and she's trying to change herself look beautiful for her husband and giving time to her husband and that we're trying to adjust in the life which is post grandfather death life post marriage life she is doing this so let us see how the two sisters talk to each other about this type of change for example we see that uh, for Sora uh, Zora appeared to be yet a child and uh, but to herself seemed as if she had certain so uh, this is this is the change another change which if, if uh, for example we are feeling Sura is changing Zohra was also changing after the marriage of uh, Sura Zohra had taken up the responsibility of the uh, elderly girl of the home and she was doing everything like that that is why Zohra appeared to her to be mature so Zohra has got two sides of personality as we are finding here that she was childish and innocent as well on the other hand she was behaving like a grown-up woman also and this is something great that a woman should change with the passage of time when responsibility is to come to her so the writer actually tries to give us an impression that even if a woman is uh, in the safe hands and she's being taken care of and she's not doing anything great but ultimately when responsibility comes to her she feels great and she wants to do these responsibilities at all and therefore uh, we can say that the writer is trying to say that Sora was not a frivolous, useless kind of girl. She was a responsible girl as well. So that is a case of uh, feministic trends in the mind of the writer also, right? And now you see what her, what their brother Habib was thinking. This is the passage about Habib and Habib is a man who loves his sisters and he was all the time kind to them all the time he is dealing with the people also but in a very polite way in a very good way and he was feeling bad and sad also because of the death of her grand of their grandfather and therefore he was also feeling lonely one can uh, put up an impression here that Habib 
is, is a male which any female writer would like to portray in the sense that the females are good with that man who is supportive towards them. So Habib's character is one of the few characters of Pakistani literature who have proved their 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 favors and their kindness and their you know caring attitude towards the women. And women definitely can prosper better if this type of men are around. So Habib is one of them. So Habib's character is also a type of feminized character where uh, more support for the woman is present as compared to any other thing. So that is why Habib's character should be seen in the light, positive light which the writer wants to shed. Actually, this is the type of person or the man which the writer would like to prefer to discuss about, talk about. So in that way, this is the kind of change which is coming not only among the female but also among the males of that time who were, were coming after getting education from outside. So let's see what more happens there in the text of this chapter number 13. After talking about this Habib, we can see that another character is entering in the last of the page. You can read the name Mohani. Mohani telephoned me saying she has something important to tell. So here is the part of the text which would introduce to us the romantic as well as political. Rather I should say it is romantic political type of situation that will enter here because Mohini is also one of the political leaders of our country and nation and community uh, but she is also one of the favorites of uh, Zora and as a result she is also favorite of Habib also because Habib was uh, taking, taking a little bit interest in her uh, possibly there may be some kind of understanding between the two. So when Mohini is coming uh, not only Zohra is happy, Habib is also happy. But alongside that, in this passage, which starts with the Anwar Jahan Begum sat brooding and ends, in my opinion, should end here, uh, where the red line is present, support his family. So here is the discussion, the common type of discussion, once again coming back to this discussion, where Anwar Jahan Begum is all the time thinking about the marriage of her daughter with Habib. So, She's also one of those women who are all the time worried and upset that the daughters should get married first of all and they should get married to some eligible bachelor. And Habib is definitely one of the eligible bachelor whom everybody would like to marry. But then uh, Anwar Jahan Begum is told by the servant that Habib is taking interest in Mohani who is a Hindu girl, who is uh, a Kafir girl and this is the type of attitude adopted by Anwar Begum. She actually wanted that her daughter should be chosen uh, by Habib uh, or her family but it's not was not happening the entry of Mohini is causing a lot of trouble for her Chagan is one of the traditional uh, servants who would listen one thing from here and they would try to report the, the, the same thing to somebody else so Madam Makhtari or other people are of the same sort these women have nothing else to do they are quite a contrast quite a foil to Sora and Sora because these people are still uh, you know spending their time and energy in, in taking care of the marriage thing in capturing the eligible bachelors in, in thinking how they can become wife of these people. So uh, the major issue with the traditional woman as they felt insecure uh, was like this. But on the other hand, we have another type of woman and that is definitely Zuhra and uh, Mohini and, and Suhra and Suraya. These are the women who are quite opposite to that. Their mission of life is quite different as compared to the uh, mission of life of Hanbri Begum or uh, Akhtri Begum or the people like that. So that is why as soon as she uh, looks at the site where uh, Zohra, Habib and Mohini are standing side by side, so she says shameless. She says this is an infidel girl. So that uh, is, is the word which she labels only because her mental setup is not matching with the mental setup which is being shown while these people are standing together. So in a way we can say that women of that time were also divided into two groups. One which was traditional, another which was non-traditional. And so uh, same happens in a society where the progress is yet to be made, the tradition also survives or the classical system also survives and the newness also continues to enter. So this is the uh, representation of the old traditional women and the alongside represent representation of the modern women as well. So this is the case which is taking place in this novel again and again we are finding this type of situation. So I would say that novel, uh, novels chapter number 13 is really significant chapter because it goes to talk about number of things. One, especially about women, then about men also. That there were certain women who were changing after getting education. Their attitude to, towards life was quite different as compared to the women who were still traditional. They were thinking still in terms of marriage, beauty, good male, eligible male, etc. So they would like to enter into marriage scene as soon as possible. 
uh, the change is being reflected, educational effect is being reflected, the divide among the women is also being reflected in this chapter. Not only this, the change in men is also being portrayed through Habib. And Sura, even after you know having her marriage, she was still thinking of getting back to that life, which was politically active life, and which was a type of life in which she could show her worth as well. So in that way, hints are being given that Sura will also leave that domestic life and she will come also back to the life where Zuhra wants to be there. So that's all about chapter number 13. Possibly you might have enjoyed this. If so, do not fail to hit the subscribe button and the like button and comment if you like. Sometime maybe be answering that. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you in some next video.